What's millionaire Steve Braun not telling us in his slick TV ads? The truth. He's not the authentic conservative he claims. Braun What's millionaire Steve Braun not telling us in his slick TV ads? The truth. Authentic conservative he claims. Braun What's millionaire Steve Braun not telling us in his slick TV ads?
Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Court of Spades. I am Emily. I will be your DM as well as uh, playing the character Nyx, the Mythical Beast Tiefling member of this party. Um, I'm going to quickly... Oh, Wiz is here. Excellent. Um, <laughs> I'm going to quickly recap what happened last time and then we can introduce the rest of the party and then begin. Uh, so last time we played, you guys left the circus. You had breakfast with everyone and you met um, a lot more of the circus members. Um, uh, that was like <laughs> bulk of what happened last session so was you guys got to talk amongst yourselves. Marin talked to uh, Cal a lot. Uh, Val encountered um, a man who I don't believe uh, we learned his name. I could be wrong though. Let me double check real quick. Um. Yeah, you're right. No, his name was Juan. JC. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that's who Val was talking to. And then, um, uh, Dougal and Doyle were there serving breakfast, as well as seven dwarves, one of which Peru interacted with. Her name was Alexandria. And, um, <laughs> Nyx interacted with Alaric and Reyna who were uh, a human rogue and a gold dragonborn. Um, that conversation didn't go too well. None of the conversations went particularly smoothly. I think Peter also interacted with Celia, uh, Celia a little bit. Um, and that was pretty much all you did. You guys then left the circus. Um, right before you guys left, Thana encountered Peru and gave him a piece of broken mirror asking him to turn it into glass and be before they returned back to the circus and then you guys left the circus when you guys got in back into the evermore you encountered a pack of crenshaw which you swiftly defeated and that is where we ended the last session so uh with that being said we're gonna pick up back in the evermore and would the rest of the party like to introduce themselves, starting from the top of our Discord chat, just going straight down? <laughs> Hi, I'm Wiz. Uh, and I play the half elf uh, wizard, Jesus, uh, Mary Marlin. Hey everyone, it's Daniel, and I'm playing the halfling bard, Peter Longbottom. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Zaya, your sleepy time boy, and today I'm gonna do the. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I play uh, the fish man, pirate guy, Peru Wara. <laughs> I don't know if Gunby can talk right now. I don't think he can. So our last party member is Lex, and he is playing... Okay, yeah, he can't right now. Uh, he will be shortly, though. Um, he is playing our human cleric, Gunby. And just as a disclaimer for anyone who has previously attended one of our streams, um, one of our party members, uh, Val, who was played by Starry, will no longer be joining us for these sessions because of a work conflict, which we totally understand. So uh, Val has been just kind of like <laughs> written out of the campaign. I'm not one of the, I'm not really one for um, like killing off a party member in fiction when it comes to like a conflict or something. I'm not, I don't really uh, enjoy doing that because I think it brings unnecessary like events to the rest of the storyline. Like I don't really need the party coping with a party member death right now <laughs> in the timeline. So we're just gonna say Val like walked off into the sunset or something or like got lost in the Evermore. <laughs> uh, but um that is why nat will be playing with us from now on and to 
kind of we'll 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 get to introducing uh, Nat's character to the game, uh, but until then, uh, you guys are still in the Evermore. So after encoun- encountering um, the Crenshaw from last session, <laughs> uh, you guys kind of rested for a bit. It wasn't. I'm not going to count it as a long rest because that would require you guys like sleeping in the Evermore and that's not recommended but um if anyone I don't think anyone should have any health points um diminished from last session because I believe Jack helped heal the party um but if anyone needs heal like healing go for it roll dice you, you can regain it so you guys took a short rest and are now back on the path. So Jack is holding the map and guiding you along uh, through the rest of the Evermore. And I'm just going to say real quick, well, you know what I should have had prepared? My dice. (laughs) Good job. I had everything else. Let me just quickly reach in here and grab some dice. Okay, Marin, I'm gonna need you to make a deck saving throw. Alright. Uh, let me also get my day. Because I'm okay. <laughs> oh, decks? Mm hmm. Uh, ten. <laughs> ten. Okay. Um, <laughs> you hear a low rumble, and like as you look up to the sky, it is a very familiar sound to you. Um, and you look up at the sky expectantly, um, kind of bracing yourself for what you know is about to come. But instead of striking you from the air as normal lightning would. A bolt of lightning shoots up from the, the ground and uh, grazes your body as it as it climbs upwards towards the tops of the trees. And you take four points of thunder damage. Shit. Th- thunder and lightning are like the same kind of damage, right? Uh, it's just thunder damage. They're not. It'd be lightning damage. Oh, lightning damage then, okay. Alrighty, uh, <laughs> Nyx, who is standing right next to you, like, jumps out of his skin, and he's like, Holy shit, Marin, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Are, are you sure I can help? Yeah, no, it's not it? like I haven't been electrocuted before. Uh, that's... that is true. I don't think electrocution is something that should be <laughs> looked for. <laughs> should be experienced more than once in any lifetime. Alright, well... I happen I'm, to agree. <laughs> I'm an evocation wizard who happens to be specialized in lightning magic and used to perform with it quite a lot. So, accidents happen. Oh, we got a, we got an expert here. Oh, I see now. <laughs> yeah, Marin's really good at what he does. Sometimes he's not perfect at it though you know (laughs) things happen distractions people throwing shit i i i deadpan stare at nyx Uh, (laughs) what nothing i I sense that attention I'm not saying, you know, I... You have thrown shit at me before, don't lie. No, okay. (laughs) I was talking more about, like, hecklers and shit like that. Oh. I don't throw shit at you while you're performing. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Hop off my dick. (laughs) Uh, and he kind of, like, playfully punches you in the arm. Uh... As I'm all up for uh, hopping on people's dicks, I think we should get out of the open here while we still have time. 
Nyx laughs very loudly at that, and Jack looks kind of uncomfortable with the discussion that's happening, especially because he just watched Marion get electrocuted. <laughs> um, and he's like, um, okay, yeah, uh, I agree with Peter, we should probably keep going. Uh, it's best that we don't spend excessive amount of time in these woods, because that lightning isn't a rare occurrence, as you've kind of picked up by now. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, Peru, roll your constitution save. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay, uh. Where's my constitution? Uh. 13. Uh. Okay. Did I forget? Did we discuss what you'd have to pass uh, for that? We may have somewhere in our DMs. Yeah, I'll search it real quick, but I don't- I think- I think you pass, because I'm almost positive I had it, like, a relatively low pass. So I'm gonna say you passed that check, so you're- Okay. We're just doing okay. Oh, he probably jumped at the sound, but, like, since you guys have been in the woods for a little bit, you might have been getting slightly adjusted to the unpredictability of it, and since it didn't hit you, you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you guys keep- you guys keep going as you navigate your way out of these woods. Um, you actually don't really encounter anything else uh, as you make your way out, because you guys made it pretty far through the woods um, before you encountered the Crenshaw last time. So as you exit, uh, you finally feel like the relief of like kind of the tension that ma that like negative dark energy that surrounds the Evermore. It kind of like starts to melt away as you see the edge of the tree line and it's super bright past the end of these trees like it it's it's early in the morning and even though you guys have been walking through this like dark kind of stormy cold environment you can tell that as soon as you exit these woods you're gonna be back in like the late summer and it's gonna be nice and sunny and morning and stuff like that so um you guys exit and you hear jack kind of like breathe a sigh of relief and he's like okay that's over now is everyone all right uh marin are you sure you don't need any help you know i'm perfectly capable of helping you out uh, no i'm fine for now thank you okay. though no problem uh all right so we need to go back down to rouge canyon uh let's carefully make our way down there uh i hope you're all prepared and uh everyone needs to make their survival check as you guys approach the um edge of this canyon uh you are about to conquer this rough terrain again uh remember i do not need to make that yeah you don't need to make it you're good okay survival yep survival oh boy oh that's a uh... <laughs> Oh. I believe that's an <laughs> eight. Um. <laughs> uh, Marion got a big seven. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> you just need to put a space after the exclamation point, Gumby. Um. <clears throat> and also connect one to d20. <laughs> Sorry, I said that way too late. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Nick's got a 16. What the heck? There you go. Yeah, that's what Peter said. Oh boy, Jack's not doing too hot either. Jack? Oh, uh, well, he has a- Jack got a 9. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Gun Gumby, got an <laughs> Gumby got an 18. Nick's got a 16. Uh, and that is- everyone at the party who really passed that check and Peru is fine so Peru, Nyx, and Jack are uh oh no not Jack sorry Gunby are navigating this fine however the rest of you after kind of your encounter and you guys have been hiking through these woods for a few hours now and you're not quite used to the heat that is currently beating down on you from the summer sun so uh you guys start to make your way down the side of this canyon and find yourself tripping 
and just like you feel a lot more exhausted than you have because of how hot it is. So, um, on any checks you make from this point out, you're going to have disadvantage on it, like ability checks. As long as you're in this canyon, you're going to have disadvantage on the ability checks. Oh boy. Uh, because you are hindered by the terrain, uh, as well as the heat. It's, uh, nice out, so Peru is shirtless now, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Bless up. Nyx, as always, is wearing a crop top. <laughs> I hate him so much. <laughs> uh, so you guys make your way down the canyon, and um, as you guys are navigating, Jack is kind of trailing a little bit more behind. He's not guiding you as much, since you guys are ultimately retracing your steps. Um, but you are now on the side of the bank where you guys first encountered the kobolds. And um, I, uh, anybody... You guys approach the site where you guys encountered the kobolds, and I would like anyone who wants to uh, to make an investigation check. Oh heck yeah! Oh shit! <laughs> I would love to with my disadvantage. Uh... Oh wait, is <sighs> Nick Scott a six? <laughs> uh, natural. Uh, eighteen plus one is nineteen. Sweet. A uh, big old thirteen. That's not too bad. No, with disadvantage is not bad. No. Uh, Gunby, you want to roll uh, investigation? You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Gunby isn't uh, doing too hot there then. Uh, so, <laughs> Peru scored highest, Marin got a 13, and Peter got an 11. Okay, so. We're gonna say this is mainly Merritt and Peru. Uh, you guys approach the site of uh, these kobolds, and Peru, after kind of looking over um, the wreckage, uh, you notice, and you, Marin, you notice this as well as you guys are kind of sifting through. You notice that there's like a pretty decent layer of like sand and dust that has blown over and is almost starting to like bury this this caravan uh which is interesting because that seems pretty fast for uh you know being gone a day uh since you encountered them so that's what you pick up you notice that there's like a thick uh covering of or the beginning of a thick covering of uh sand and dust and let me really quick look at something for Peru, because you scored really well. Where did I write it in my notes? Here we go. Okay. Uh, Peru, as you are kind of like uh, ruffling through these uh, kobolds, you find a half-buried, like, velvet bag. Ooh. And inside is 50 GP. Fuck yeah! Yeah, so, you can nice. pocket that, and that is yeah. yours. So, you guys must have missed that because, well, actually, last time you guys encountered these kobolds, you didn't do anything to, like, investigate the bodies. <laughs> Uh, so Peru nabs that, and that is all that's really notable about, uh, this caravan. Like, it's just kind of a wreck, and, like, the remaining bodies of the kobolds. Um, you are kind of disgusted, because as you approach them, there were large crows and vultures, like, picking apart at the corpses of, uh, the kobolds. Mm -hmm. And there is, like, a distinct kind of rancid smell as, like, flies kind of buzz around uh, these corpses that you have left here. Uh, you guys might anticipate some kind of repercussion for leaving a bunch of dead people in the canyon when you return, <laughs> if they're able to link it to you, of course. Listen, uh, we, as far as I know, we didn't leave any evidence. <laughs> I don't as think- As far as I know, We left I no survivors. Involved. No one could <laughs> yeah. talk. That's true. Peru wasn't involved, and Nyx wasn't involved at all. <laughs> and, yeah, dead man tell no tales, you know? 
So, uh, <laughs> uh, you guys continue past the kobolds. Jack looks a little sickened by, like, the display. Like, he is pinching his nose and shuffles quickly past the kobolds, not really waiting for um, Marin and Peru to stop sifting through everything. So, um, he just looks a little queasy. Uh, but you guys make your way through the canyons. And... As you guys make your way a little further down, you see a, um, a little bit ahead of you, there is two people walking side by side. They seem to just be, uh, one of them is carrying, like, uh, a large kind of bag, and, like, they have, um, animals kind of strung up over their shoulder, like they've just come back from a hunting trip, and the other one is wielding a large bow. Uh... If you want, you can call forward to them. Uh, but if not, they are just kind of moseying along on the, on your side of the uh, bank, so they're like walking the same direction as you. Does anybody care to call out to them? You don't have to, of course. You don't have to do anything. It's D&D. Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. Okay, so you guys just walk up behind these folk for a little while, and they're going like, they're actually traveling faster than you because they have less people, so it doesn't take long before these two figures kind of disappear uh, from your sight because they are traveling much faster. As I just said, sorry, that was really redundant. (laughs) Um, uh, Probably in a hurry, just like us. Yeah, uh, usually... As I said, like, you need a merchant's pass, like, a permit to travel in between cities, so most likely they were merchants on their way to uh, the Sunday market to sell off their kill. So that's probably uh, all they were doing. And if you linger too much in between cities, like, there's literally nothing there for anybody, so, like, (laughs) there's no point really lingering. Uh, But you guys continue to make your way through this canyon. Uh... You approach the initial wall that you guys, uh, it's, it's kind of like a area of the canyon where it rises up, like the path you're walking on rises up a bit because they're seeing, like, the river has widened a bit here. So if you don't mind, uh, can everybody make a, hmm, what kind of check do I want to do for this? Uh, just make, like, a general dex check to see if you guys are going to keep your footing uh, as you navigate this narrower path in the canyon. Do I still have disadvantage because of the previous? Okay. Yeah, everyone who got, uh, who failed the survival roll has disadvantage. Ooh, alright, 23. Ooh, that's good. Uh, 9. Nine. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, nat, I rolled a, nat 20. I rolled a 19 and a 20. All right, there you go. So, uh, so Dex, it's yep. a 22. Okay. Uh, that's everyone. So, Peru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, as, as you watch the rest of your party, hold on real quick, let me roll for Jack. Oof. The rest of my party, except Jack, apparently. Except for Jack. (laughs) Yep, nope, Jack got an eight. So, uh, you watch, like, Nick's fucking strolls past this, like, he doesn't even notice that the (laughs) the terrain has changed at all. Uh, because he got a fucking nat 20. He, like, cartwheels down it or something. He's like a gazelle. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) He's beauty, he's grace. Uh, (laughs) uh, Followed quickly by Peter, and uh, Peter has no issue because he's tiny enough that, like, this path is like a normal path to him. (laughs) It's fairly narrowed for him. And uh, Marin also does very, very well uh, following Nyx's lead. Probably because Nyx is, like, holding his hand with his tail. And guiding him uh, over the path. Uh, however, 
Jack seems to be struggling a bit, and Peru, as he, like, kind of slows up to navigate his way, he slips on a rock and tumbles backwards into you, and you guys take uh, quite the tumble off this ledge and into the river below. So, you are now drifting downstream. Obviously, um, earlier when you guys tried to navigate the stream, the river wasn't extremely deep, but this is a wider part of the river, so it's deeper than before. So, you guys are going to have to make... Oof, what is swimming? Is that survival? That is definitely survival or athletics, I would say. Okay. Uh, Okay, then, Peru, you can make a... You can choose either one if you want to roll athletics or survival. Um, make a check to see if you can swim against this current that is now sweeping you and Jack downstream. I'm gonna make a check for Jack. 17. Okay. Jack got a nat 20, so... Uh, you guys quickly, like, like, the shock of the river is enough that you guys react instinctively, almost, to this event, and you see Jack just, like, it's it's surprising because he's a tiny little like dainty elf, but this boy like <laughs> does not want to be in this water, and he starts str- making a beeline straight for the stream, checking over his shoulder once to make sure that you are able to follow, which you are with that check. So you guys uh, beat the current and make it swiftly back to uh, the shore, but you are about fifteen feet back from your the rest of your party. And you guys are gonna have to um, reattempt the dexterity check to navigate the path once again, because now there's like a little bit of a loose spot where Jack like pushed up the rock and tripped over it. Awesome. <laughs> the rest of your party waits on the other side of this narrow ledge. For you, you know, guys. for a fishman, Peru does not look like super happy to have been in the water. Okay. <laughs> I start whispering to you. I was like, should should we help them? Seventeen. Uh, okay. Uh, Nick leans over to Peter. He's like, um, that would probably be best. I don't think Jack doesn't look too well right now. And as he says it, like Peru, like as, if you look to Jack, he's like, have you ever seen like a cat being bathed? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> it's very much like that. Like he looks very put out. His hair is like hanging is like sticking to his face his ears are like tilted downwards he looks very upset to have plunged into the water uh so yeah go ahead can i assist jack in getting over this like yeah absolutely so with the help uh because i think nyx is also going to try to help so nyx kind of gets up and like offers his hand to jack and you kind of like act as like a spotter behind jack you know, yeah. when you're, like, rock climbing and stuff like that. So I'm going to roll for Jack with advantage. Whoops, I missed my box. <laughs> Holy shit. That's another nat 20 for Jack. Uh, Perfect. so, which is great, because the first roll was a 7. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Jack looks frustrated enough that he takes Nix's hand and lets you kind of help guide him, Peru, and both of you make it successfully over this narrow ledge. He's kind of just, like, powering over it, because he does not want to be back in that water anytime soon. So he gets to the other side, and he's kind of like, alright, let's keep going. Um, one second. And he casts, um, press the digitation, and... <laughs> It takes a couple seconds, but the water particles, like, fly. I can do that. I help. Okay. I just... (laughs) Both of you cast Prestidigitation and restore uh, Jack to his former beautiful self, (laughs) free, plunging into the water below. Nyx kind of looks at you, Peru, and he's like, Uh, can you do that? Nope, but I'm alright. It's fine. Can we just go, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you're you're okay, dude? You don't look... I mean, you did fall into the water, so I don't expect you to look happy about it. But you're you're good? Yep. We're All just right. moving beyond this. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you guys, continue along. 
to the canyon. Um, as you guys walk, the, the sun kind of reaches, like, peak performance, so it's around, like, noon. Uh, when you guys finally reach the edge of this canyon, and um, you, the, the people you saw earlier are not really anywhere to be found. They've definitely disappeared. Um, so, uh, as you guys make your way out of this canyon, you see the kind of pathway that leads you back into town. So congratulations, you guys na successfully navigated your way back from the circus without dying. That's wonderful. I'm so proud of you guys. Uh, I will never understand why they put those fucking circus in the back, in the back <laughs> ends of the wild wilderness. Uh, yeah, it really doesn't seem like the ideal location, does it? No, not at all. <laughs> It's really fucking weird. Is this some form, some weird form of like Darwinism, where only the strongest can afford entertainment? That kind of like, honestly, I don't know if you're joking. But that kind of makes sense to me. <clears throat> it seemed like they didn't want people there, who like weren't worthy of seeing them before. You know? Yeah. Oh all God. like. <laughs> it's all I'm connecting just, now, guys. I'm just chalking it up to some weird elder shit. Yeah, they just seem really it. pretentious. Alright, alright, elves and Darwinism, got it. Okay, I think Darwin. we're onto something, guys. <laughs> you know, is, he like, is he like scribbling this down furiously? Like, am I scribbling this down furiously? I'm like, like scratching my head, I'm like, you know, there's, I always wonder why elves are always so like haughty and like felt like they were so much superior. Also ghosts. There's also ghosts. ghosts. Yeah. There's ghosts, alright, so we got <laughs> elves, Darwinism, and ghosts. They gave me a mirror? Ghost Mirror, did. got it. I'm just listening yeah. to the words, guys. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on a second, Peter. Turn yeah. we, what? Rewind. <laughs> I pull out the mirror out of my satchel and like show it to them. The ghost gave me a mirror. I don't know. Can I? What? <laughs> Ooh, can I? Can I take it? <laughs> you can oh, ask for it. <laughs> can I? Can I take that for a second? If you give it back, sure. Yeah, sure. I don't want your weird ghost mirror. I take it and I cast detect magic. Okay. Um, detect magic just lets you see what school of magic it is, right? If it is magical. Uh, let me pull up this spell. <laughs> Here. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, I'm still gonna put it in spells for future reference. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I can sense any magic within 30 feet of me for up to 10 minutes. Um, and I can see the aura around any visible creature or object within the area that bears magic. Um, okay. And I learned the school of magic, yeah. Okay, so um, you definitely see this piece, this mirror start glowing. You also see, like, Peter's uh, thingy that he bought. It's a flute, right? <laughs> My viol, thank you. Yeah, viol, like, yeah. <laughs> the viol the finest mahogany. <laughs> yes. The viol starts to glow. Um, you notice, like, the ring that Nyx is wearing uh, starts to emit a faint aura. Basically, everyone who's wearing some kind of magical, like, possession around you um, is, like, has a faint glow around it. Which, yeah, I sure. Think it's literally everyone except for Peru. Yeah, I don't think Peru has anything magical on him. No. Gumby's, like, book that he keeps on him is, like, emitting a... I don't know, Gumby, do you keep... I know you can't talk out loud, but I will narrate for the stream. Um, do you keep the book, like, on one of those, like, straps where it's kind of, like, visibly on your person? Or do you keep it in, like, a bag? I would... I would still be able to sense the aura. Yeah, yeah. Regardless. Oh, okay. Okay, so you, you notice that there's a faint aura around um, Gunby's bag. Um, because that's where his holy symbol is kept. But, let me quickly see uh, what school of magic this technically counts as. Uh... Because I don't remember what all of them are in D&D. &D. Okay. Um... Mm 
I think it would count as illusion magic. Or would it? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say it's from this, the uh, School of Illusion. I think... Uh-oh. Oh! Baron <laughs> we'll suddenly drops dead. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hello? Yeah, Hi. We, we can hear you. <clears throat> okay. Um, what School of Magic? It's Illusion Magic. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Marin, like, flips it over a couple times, like, looks at it. Can I make, like, an investigation check for Yeah, go ahead. You something? Kind of check. Also, you don't have disadvantage now that you guys are out of the canyon. Obviously, like, Sick. you're not on rough terrain anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Investigation or Arcana or... Uh... Well, what are you- are you trying to see if you, like, notice anything about what it potentially could do? Or are you trying to know if you recognize the kind of magic that it's enchanted with? Uh, uh, first one. Okay, uh, then it's investigation. Okay, great. Um, I'm proficient. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, 20 total. Okay. Uh, you- <sighs> You honestly, like, don't notice anything really about this mirror. It seems just like a normal piece of mirror, other than the fact that it is emitting this magical aura. Uh, when you look at it, you see yourself. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, I sure love technology. However, I will say... Uh, if you, you got a 20, so I'll say this. When you look at yourself in this mirror... Um, you see yourself, but you have kind of you honestly like don't longer ears. Really about this mirror, it seems just like uh, uh, I hate that. And um, you look just like rougher than you currently look. Like the the kind of like you're sure you're a technology. courtesan. So However, like I will you say... obviously are a very attractive. Uh, being, uh, and when and you look at yourself you in this you mirror, like, you so don't I'll say this. When you look, look at yourself attractive. in this mirror, like, you look almost um, a little withered, and you have long, you long yourself, ears, but you um, have very much like representative of, like, a full-blown elf. Mirror, it seems just like, um, uh, hate that. And, uh, and that is all you, you see just like <laughs> rougher than you currently mm, look. Hate like, it. The, the kind of, like, <laughs> <laughs> Marin like you're, frowns, you're a like heavy frowns. So, like, um, you obviously and are a very attractive uh, pulls being, the mirror away from his face. Mirror, like, you so, don't and just like pulls into his hands for a second. Attractive. attractive. What? Like, what did like, you see? Face, and then hands it to Nyx. And you have oh, long, okay. long ears. Look at yourself in that. Um, okay. Very much. Uh, what do you and see? Nyx looks in it. And, um, he sees himself, but he is, um, a bit, like, softer looking, and he has long hair and smaller pointed ears that aren't, that aren't, like, as prominent as his current ones, because, like, as a tiefling, you kind of have, like, more, like, demonic, <laughs> that's a weird way of saying, but, like, more demonic shaped ears. Uh, his look like yours do, Marin. They're, like, a softer, smaller, half-elf type of reminiscent thing and he has a long uh hair and he uh doesn't have fangs or anything like that and his horns are gone uh and he frowns and he's like okay what kind of magic mirror is this i don't know i, I take mean, it back and then i hand it to peru i don't like that no. uh, you said you got it from the ghost yeah, the ghost gave it to me. They said to make it into glass. It's illusion magic. I think we should look into getting that identified. Okay. And Peru just kind of like wraps it back up and puts it back in his bag. Okay. Um, uh, you guys like 
Jack is kind of like tapping his foot and he's like, um, okay, so is that, are we done? That pit stop? Is that everything? I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm impatient, but uh, we really should be getting back to Ace. I think we've been gone a little bit too long. Uh, we were supposed to report back by noon, and it is currently noon, and we haven't gotten back to headquarters yet. Oh, well, he'll be fine. Yes, let's go. Okay. Oops, sorry, I just threw a dice at my laptop. Um, okay. Uh, Jack turns back around and leads you guys, uh, into town. Uh, before you guys kind of re-enter everything like the town is bustling because it's a sunday morning so the the open market is in in the center square um and nix kind of drags back behind the party and like pulls your elbow a little marin so that you're walking behind everyone too and he looks at you he's kind of like talking in a slightly quieter voice and he's like oh why didn't why didn't you like it i thought it was pretty neat the mirror. Um, well, you saw something. What, uh, what did you see? It doesn't matter. Okay. I don't- I just don't know why. Well, you said it was illusion magic, right? Uh, maybe it shows you, like, your deepest desire or something. No. That's not it. How do you know? Uh Mary just like gives him a look. Okay. Well, you don't have to tell me what you saw, but I saw me, but I wasn't me. You know? Like I didn't have these things, and he like points to his horns, and he's like, I didn't have these, and he points to his teeth. And he's like, I just looked like normal, you know? Yeah, well, I guess I look normal too in one way or another. Yeah. Okay, hopefully we can get it identified somewhere. The uh, people at that circus were pretty decent. I'm not sure why... some ghost would be stuck there. Yeah. I mean, weird, sure, weird as shit. But decent. Yeah. The fucking yeah. performers, I mean, we're weird as shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, you know, for a reconnaissance mission, I don't, I don't think we answered a lot of the questions that people, that Ace had about the circus. I guess we know who's running it and stuff like that. But, like, I feel like there are more questions than answers now. It's very concerning, I agree. But. Peter! What? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you. I thought when I was talking to Marin alone. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's totally okay. I'm rolling with it. <gasps> sorry, you really have to like. I just poke my head around the corner, like, hey. <laughs> you really oh, have to shit. like announce your presence or something, dude. I like you're really small, and it's hard for me to see you. Oh, is it? Oh, I see. It's because I'm a half elf. Okay. No, no it's just halfling, like, halfling, halfling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I just like you surprised me. Uh, but yeah, I My agree. With that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a little jumpy, you know. That circus was full of weird surprises, and also the forest. So I have to just kind of come back to reality, you know. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully Ace knows what's what to do from here. Got the his voice kills my throat. Uh but yeah, you guys, uh Jack leads you back and you guys enter uh that little rundown inn uh that you know to be concealing the entrance to the headquarters for the Court of Spades. And you guys nod to 
the figure who is standing, as usual, at his post, uh, cleaning a glass behind the bar. And you guys make your way to the back and descend into the headquarters of the Court of Spades. You know, I would hate to have that guy's job. I feel like nobody ever says hi to him. See, I always, I always nod to him, and he just nods back. But he always is polishing the same fucking glass. I know, it's kind of weird. But, I mean, I guess he's gotta look normal, right? Is polishing a glass in an abandoned bar normal? Not particularly. Great, okay. Maybe they so, should work on their, like, whole front end we, thing. Yeah, we should We like, should mention it. it. Yeah, we should mention it. <laughs> uh, don't uh, Jack kind of like overhears uh, this conversation a little bit and um, I, I forget Marin when you guys when you first encountered him you cast like detect magic on him right or something Jack no no sorry I'm not uh, on the guy at the bar Oh, uh... Did, did I? I can't remember. I don't. I can't remember. Not. That, like, feels like it sounds right, but I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. Okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I was just thinking. Um, but yeah, Jack kind of overhears this conversation. He's like, don't, don't worry too much about him. He, he knows what his job is, and... Is polishing a glass. Yes, well, he's guarding the entrance, you know? We have to have someone who looks like they work here. Okay. Well, yes, but maybe yeah, who works in a, who works in an abandoned bar? Who's paying him? The ghost. We're, pay <laughs> we're, pay we're paying him. He works for us. Right. I fucking know right. that, Jack. Right. Right. I know that. What proof? To the people outside, it doesn't look like he's being paid by anybody. It looks like he's being paid by the ghosts. Where it comes far. <laughs> Listen, how many times do you try to approach a rundown inn? <laughs> Not very many, but if I did, I would want to know that there were patrons in here that the guy was <laughs> polishing the glass of. Listen, this place has been closed for years, and the reason he's here is because he's posing as the owner. It's a very long story. Not one that but we need to get into. But if it's been closed for years, then why does he even need to be there? <laughs> Wait, here's, here's an idea. It's all here's about a... performance. So, here's an idea. Yes. Uh, we, we, the Court of Spades, should <laughs> renovate the bar. <laughs> the fucking bar. Marin, I think you're missing the point. Um, I the... think I'm right on the point. No, it's... We don't we could want... renovate the bar, that would be really nice. You could renovate the bar, that <laughs> would right. make much more sense than somebody fucking Well, and then we'd have, like, a, a place to just, like, hang out and be ourselves. It'd be nice. We can do that in the headquarters. The whole point is to not draw attention to this area. But what's a better cover than a bar? Nobody suspects a bar. Nobody suspects Everybody a bar. suspects a bar. Don't be... Don't fool yourselves. <laughs> We can't have patrons. We can't Why have not? patrons. Because they it's too give close. us more money. Can, can it be our own bar? <laughs> Haru, we have unlimited access, essentially, to the Queen's entire treasury. You really think we need funding? Yes. Why not? Why not have more money? Okay, let's say. I could work my side in... job right out of that bar. Marin, you know I, how I see that through way. you, you know? I know that this is some kind of like ulterior motive so that you can hook up with some customers that is that is not what the bar is about <laughs> oh you're not very convincing and even if it was jack who are you to slut shame marin <laughs> hey i never said anything about oh. it i just i'm just saying uh <laughs> nix is like what is happening right now <laughs> Um, and Jack, like, sighs and, like, pinches the bridge of his nose, and he's like, Look, the only reason he's there is so that we don't have, um, 
officials who aren't directly linked to the Queen wandering in here and investigating the situation. Well, I, I know that. I know why he's there. I'm well, just good. It just it's doesn't seem like he's boring. doing a very good job all by himself. Well, we have yet to be discovered yet, have we? Fair point. Thank you! <laughs> and Jack, like, turns around and he's, like, rubbing his temples a little bit. <laughs> I lean into Peru. Elf. What, what did you say? Elf. Did, oh, okay. <laughs> Peru kind of like nods. <laughs> uh, you guys uh, make your apparently the longest staircase known to man. Uh, and emerge back in that original like throne room area. Um where it seems like it's vacated. Like, there's almost no sign of life in the main uh, throne room, which honestly, like, is not a huge surprise, but it is a little off-putting because usually there's, like, some kind of activity or someone's kind of, like, hanging out waiting for people to enter. Um, but there's actually no one here. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> If you guys like, Jack kind of like raises an eyebrow and looks around. He cups his hands around his mouth. He's like, "Hello, anybody? Ace, uh, David, anyone?" Uh, and there is no response. Uh, you guys do, however, hear like through you know how like there's a throne room and then there's a door that leads kind of back to where. There's a hallway that leads directly to Ace's office, and then there's a hallway that leads to where the dorm areas are. Uh, you hear some loud chattering coming uh, from the other side of that door. Uh, which Jack starts making his way over towards. Yeah, I follow. Stick a yeah. gander here. Yeah, Nyx also follows. Uh, so, you guys throw open- uh, Jack throws open the door and peeks his head around. And, uh, there is just, like, there is three other members of the court standing on the other side, and then, um, they're kind of chattering and waiting outside of Ace's door, uh, where you can hear, like, kind of another commotion coming in. He's talking loudly to someone that you can't quite hear the response from. Um, and when you open the door and they see Jack, like, uh, eyes kind of widen and uh, one of the women in the hallway like gasps um, you would obviously recognize these members because you guys have been a part of this court for a little while so uh, the people who are standing in front of you are um, uh, where are their names thank you okay uh, Athena she is a tall half orc monk uh David, he is a elderly, kind of stocky, dwarvish fighter. And uh, there is also a small gnome woman uh, named Pip, which is short for Piper. Um, hey guys, real good security job you've got going out there. There's literally nobody there. Uh, as you say this, Peru, uh, <laughs> Pip like runs up to you and she's like, Oh. oh, wow, I had to think of a voice. Oh my god, you're all right. You're all okay. Is is everyone okay? And she Yay. starts, like, doing a head, a head count, and she's, like, kind of looking at... She's kind of fussing over Jack a little bit. And she's like, where? You have to go see Ace immediately. Come, 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 come. And she, like, uh, grabs Jack's hand and, like, grabs your hand, Peru, because I assume you walked up to... That yeah, you her. and uh, she's like leading you both down the hallway towards uh, Ace's uh, room, and Athena and David are like whispering hurriedly to each other, and they they exit the room and go back towards the dorm areas. Um, and Pip throws open the door to Ace's office, and when you do this, you see Ace. Uh, he looks like a bit frazzled. Um, he's wearing like his Court of Spades mask. And, um, his hair is a little, like, more disheveled than normal. Um, he is 
looking over a bunch of papers and he's talking hurriedly into a stone that is on it's it's like it's like the pendant he gave you guys for communication he's talking into one of those uh and sitting next to him uh rather quietly is a stranger you don't recognize um it is a human with long white hair uh and they are kind of just sitting off to the side watching Ace run around in this panic that he is currently having. And Pip kind of clears her throat and she's like, <clears throat> Ace? Um, the back. Who and... does jazz hands? <laughs> Ace, my man, hey. we're back. We have so much to tell you, but so few answers at the same time. I have a Ace... map for you. Ace whips around and he's like, Wow, hold on. Ace voice. Australia. Where, where have you been? Hey, we were at the... Um, it's been I like didn't a realize you were my mother. <laughs> it's been like... How long has it been? It's been like a couple days. It's, it's been, been like a day. It's been like a day. It's been like a day. It's been like a One evening. Draft said we were supposed to meet at noon. It's only just past noon, isn't it? Ace kind of looks at you, like, stunned for a second, and he, like, sinks into his chair and, like, runs a hand through his hair, and he- A day. A day? What? Yeah. A day and a half, day. Night, right? And then he came back. Not even 24 hours. You all have been gone for a week. Uh... All right, guys. Okay, so you can add, like, weird time shit to that. Right, uh, yeah, 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 I see. All right. So. Sit down and give me an explanation immediately. Okay. I don't really know how much more of an explanation we could give you. We went, we spent the night, we came back. <laughs> you, all right, all right. you spent the, the night? Why? Why would you do that? I told oh, you. Okay. We, okay. We didn't mean to. We did not. We, were, mean we to spent the night it. there at one a... at a time. <laughs> Peter, speak. We did not spend the night there out of our own free will. We were, um, we believe some sort of illusionary magic was casted upon us, which caused us to fall asleep and thus spend the evening. The little yeah. information that we have acquired so far is a: the ringleader is an elven. An elven gentleman by the name of Marin, and numerous other Marian. employees, Marion, Marion, and all the other performers or numerous performers of numerous different uh, races and cultures. I believe one was a talking rabbit who made very They're interesting all tea. Fucking weird. I digress. They're all very, um, as he said, very weird, and all consist of s some sort of magic of some kind wrapped in their performance no one of them was some mundane performer and we oh, we also met a ghost which peru here can tell you more about but yes yeah uh it gave me yeah. a mirror and i handed over to ace <laughs> okay um... oh also we have a map for you and i tear that out of uh peru tears that out of his journal and kind of hands it over as well okay thank you um, Marin, did you have anything to add to that? Um, well, first of all, ringleader's name, Marion, not Marin, that's not Marion, my fault. Um, it, it, I, we did some snooping, it, it was, it was weird, it was magical, it was a circus, um, Nothing that more, that much more outrageous than anything I've seen. Uh -huh. Um, oh, uh, the whole place, uh, black and white. Not sure how they did that. Um, it's also in a bubble. In a bubble. Uh, in can't bubble. see or hear very much outside of the bubble when you're inside it. Um, and it makes it all, like, really nice and stuff inside. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, 
none of this has offered me any kind of explanation as to why you have been missing for a week. Do you realize the kind of panic we have to go into when like 70% of our establishment goes missing? Well, I'm we, sorry, Ace, but I'm it's not like we had like any say in the matter. We Ace. were unaware that we were gone for more than a day. Ace. I'm sorry. We didn't know. Look, we're all alive. Or we're all back. So you don't have to panic anymore. It's fine. Yeah. Yes, that is true. I have to contact the queen, however. Uh, but... Oh, you think the queen doesn't have enough money to replace us if, if we didn't show up again? I Let's mean, be honest, guys. Kind of like, we weren't going to be... A... Yeah. I'm going to be the first one to say this, but I don't think we were going to make a huge dent in... <laughs> The Queen's book. <laughs> Peter, I'm going to say this in the most uh, polite way I can. I'm not concerned whether or not you died. I'm concerned whether or not you went AWOL. <laughs> Me? AWOL? You really, you really don't on. trust us that much, much Ace. <laughs> Come on. He has a point. Listen, I trust you. Of course I trust you. I wouldn't have hired you if I didn't trust you. But when you expect people to come back after a day, and they don't return for a week... Also, I tried to communicate with you several times via the little device I gave you, and I received no response. So, you know, it kind of uh, reads as a little sketchy. We didn't really receive anything on our end, so and I put your it thing must list. be broken. So communications broke up, and that on the list. Hold on. Um. Is we don't technically know how long we were asleep for. Oh shit! Yeah. All oh, right, I mean, we no never asked. We... Technically, we never asked, but they sure as hell made it seem like it was only one day, one night. Oh, they set us up. Well, I'm not completely sure about that, but if time works weirdly in that pocket, then maybe it works weirdly in that pocket for everyone. That could be. It may have been one day there. I'm not... <clears throat> I'm... I'm an arcanist, but I, I'm not completely sure about... the details of... other planes and such. Hmm. <sighs> you... You think it might be, like, a portal? I have no idea. I'm just throwing a uh, metaphorical spaghetti at the wall. Um, <laughs> I could tell I it wasn't literal spaghetti. <laughs> well, Mary just like, make a fair smiles, point. like a little bit because he's kind of relaxing, but not quite back to his I'm, normal self. I'm sorry that. We worried you and caused a fuss. Um, no, we didn't get anything. You're not really. I, very I much was at casting all. Detect magic all over the place, if I remember right, and it wasn't. The whole fucking thing is magic. The whole fucking thing is magic, but like it wasn't. I, I didn't. I almost got some nice information out of a. Right, I almost got some information out of a magical little girl. That didn't quite work out. She really out. didn't, though. Listen, shh, <laughs> shh. Maybe she would have ran off, and she would have joined us, and then boom, more information. Well, well, but that's yeah, in the past. Said, you did a really bad job. Listen, that's the past. Don't worry about that, Peru. Everybody, Anyways. calm down. I don't. I'm like losing Ace's accent, and I apologize. That's uh, okay. No, you're fine. Uh, Roy. Uh. What's this about a little girl? 
one of the performer performers, she was actually she was kidnapped by we believe she was kidnapped by Cobalt. No, um, she was definitely kidnapped. Bro. She was definitely kidnapped. Yeah, she was kidnapped by Cobalt, and uh, we re rescued her, which is which allowed us to get a uh, an inside conversation with the uh, the head honcho of Marion. And she was also a performer, had some sort of dark uh, arcane powers. Not quite, uh, not really quite sure how to explain that, but yeah, she was one was amongst strong many. Strong illusion magic. Yes, yes, she illusion had a magic. Dog. His name was Bear. <laughs> okay. A bunch, of we- a bunch of weirdos. They all were. Yeah. Ah. Uh... I am a weirdo. Have you taken a look at me? Yeah, I am a weirdo as well. Oh, yeah. I think you kind of have to to be a weirdo to be here. The the fish man, he is very much very much a weirdo. <laughs> You're a weirdo too, yes. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Jez, you're too kind for your own good. Who is who is this, by the way? New thing? I I take their hand to shake it. Oh. Oh, great. (laughs) Nyx, like, brightens up at at seeing Jez, and he, like, extends his hand, and then he he extends, like, his beast hand, and then he retracts it, and he switches to his normal hand. (laughs) Oh, I ran out of rhythm. One second. I didn't realize the music stopped playing. Boop. Okay. Um, his, his, uh, right arm is a beast hand, so he realizes quickly what he's extending, and he reaches out for, with his left normal human hand. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. It's okay. I'm I'm murdering Australian right now, so don't worry about. It. Uh, yeah. Um, Jez has been with us for quite a while, although they are new to this aspect of the court. Uh, they were a uh, wild card for a little while. Well, that's what you get for hiring hippies. Peter! <laughs> what's all <Yeah>. about? <laughs> listen, it adds for- wait, listen, we have a little bit of variety now. Oh, Jez, I think he's talking about you. Oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're a druid. A druid, of course. Peru kind of like hits Peter's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off. Peter Longbottom at your service. Uh, barred at barred at trade and shakes uh six shakes their hands. Oh, 
Thank you. I'm sure you're a very good druid too. <laughs> oh, um, I don't think I introduced myself. Um, my name is Marin Marlios. Again? <laughs> All right. Again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> And rest in peace, Gunby, who still is, like, mute in the corner. <laughs> okay. Gunby, do you have anything from your from your mute uh, standpoint that you would like to say to Jezebel that I will narrate out loud for the stream? Yeah, we can. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. How long has this been going on for? We've just been having a conversation with a silent person. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Starry, for letting us know. Uh, technical difficulties. One moment, please. It's totally okay. It's really weird, though, that it's not, like, recording your audio. Um, if you were talking to me during the test, I don't think so. I just- I was just hearing the surrounding audio. <laughs> Rest in peace. Um, Gunby said hello to your druid. Um, I, if you were talking to me earlier, like, I could not hear you. I, I thought you were just asking about the audio that was, like, being recorded. No. I didn't realize you were talking to me in the test earlier, rip. Because I was just hearing your party members. Yeah, it is weird. Well, now, when you go to OBS, here, we're gonna, if, if anyone needs to take a bathroom break, please use this time uh, while we deal with technical difficulties very shortly. I'm gonna open up my OBS and get the thing that you need, Nat. Oh, there we go. I think you should be able to hear me now. Oh. I fiddled with things. I don't know why that did what it did, but... Oh, Nat, I can hear you on the stream. Bless. I am very sorry, everybody. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't picking it up, but it is fixed. Background feedback? Um, yeah, no, that's probably my AC. It doesn't sound like too bad for me, it just sounds like a fan. Yeah, it is. It's a very big fan. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to work with that. Yeah, I'll... I am very sorry. Uh, You're good. Out 
At least your audio is is like happening. <laughs> Even with a fan noise in the background. It's okay. Okay, so we're gonna continue. Uh you greeted everybody. Uh it's just such a shame that nobody could hear how pleasant you were being. Yeah. Very, very nice person according to you. We'll yes. We'll continue to be nice. Uh yes. Okay, so um what were we talking about? Oh, well, you were greeting people and you were saying how it's not nice to call people weirdos. Yeah. I think that was, that was about right. Did Marin say something? I feel like Marin said something. I know that Marin... Oh, got his hand shaken twice. Yes. <laughs> okay, and then Gunby, uh... said hello to Jez. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jezebel, uh, will be joining us as a member for now on, considering they got into a little school ball. Isn't that right, Jez? Um, they laugh a little bit and look maybe a bit embarrassed, and, uh, kind of shrug, and it was like, it wasn't on purpose. I I promise I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not blaming you. It just seems like everyone is getting into a little bit of trouble this week. Now, now that you've been introduced, I would like to get back to the matter at hand, which is a little girl that... I'm not entirely sure what you mean. How did she get you an inside meeting with the head of the circus? Well, she worked for the circus. Yeah, she was one of the performers, so, uh... He seemed like, or they seemed like some sort of, like, parental part. figure. So... Okay, and she was being kidnapped. You said, I'm so sorry about my dice. <laughs> <laughs> By kobolds, yes. By kobolds, yes, but we weren't able to get uh, much information out of them because unfortunately they all died. They were kind of assholes, <laughs> so I don't feel bad about it. Unfortunately. No, that's to be expected. Kobolds are usually assholes. Oh. Uh, well, did you get any kind of explanation from her or the kobold of about her kidnapping situation? They said that she was useful for something. To them, at least. <clears throat> useful? For something. Most likely um, because of her. And it wouldn't be to us. Yeah. Uh, mostly because she, too, was a half-elf. So, there was okay. that. Oh, interesting. Oh, so... You said the circus is black and white. I'm just making sure my notes are right. Uh, black and white. Uh, little girl. Uh, Marion is the ringleader. There was a giant rabbit. Uh, yeah, some kind of rabbit folk, yeah. And then you fell asleep for a week. Well, that was possibly, we're not possibly. sure. Okay. Um, hmm. Oh, I have an eye. You have what? Uh... If you're speaking with it, it's not. You're lighting up, but it's nothing. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? No. no. Go ahead and talk now. Okay. Never mind. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that going. Was a, that was a good waste of my time. You're welcome. That's I what I'm here know. for. You just said you had something to say, and then you didn't say anything. 
no, I um, no, it's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, what else? Well, I can't say you got the information I sent you out there for, so well done. I will congratulate you on that, and I'm sorry for coming off as hostile or angry. I was. So, you know, it's I'm all, all right. We, we know you just have those dad feelings about us. It's fine. Oh, don't say that. Hmm. <laughs> no, it makes me feel super no. weird. <laughs> Through, I care about you all, but I never say that to me again. <laughs> Or shoot finger guns at him. <laughs> oh, um, did we see any? Oh, we didn't see any humans working there, did we? I don't think so. I think everybody was elven or something or something. Uh, like elven, or, there were dwarves. Well, yes. Oh no, but no, not there was humans. one human, wasn't there? I think. Okay. I think Doyle going. was a human. Yeah. And also, no, I, uh, that, and, that and weird the guy, guy that you... with the bee. The bee guy. The bee, bee guy. guy. He was really weird. God. That was the super guy. weird. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you don't want to know. It's just, listen, it's, it was perspective. It was performers. Did Gum. Did. Wow, that was Nick's voice. <laughs> did Gum do something? No. No. No, a no, different bee guy. A different bee guy, like literal bees. It was weird. Sorry, I'm dying a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh, okay, I, I guess that's to be expected in a circus. Well then, uh, are all of you, did you encounter anything dangerous? How was your trip through the Everwall? Uh... Oh, it was very, very dangerous. Very large bees. Very large. Oh yeah, those also are... lightning. Oh, so not big. about that life. <laughs> um, those were worse bees. Different bees than Different the, bees. the ones you were just no, talking yeah, about. No, uh, much larger, much nastier. Those were less bees and more wasps. Uh, yeah, they were, they, were they were definitely wasps. They were much mutated, yeah. awful wasps. Big, I can... gross. Yeah. I can deal with like honeybees and stuff, but like, no, these were not. These were angry. <laughs> oh, also, <laughs> these are weird angry dog things. What were they? Oh, yeah, like awful. I have no idea what the fuck those were. Uh, I got electrocuted. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I got electrocuted. Did you know that there's just like stray lightning all the time that shoots up from the ground in the Evermore? Because I didn't. I didn't either, and if I had known, I would have told you no. Uh, I am sorry about that. Uh, I I was aware of the of the storms that occur there. It's very unpredictable, you know. It's hard to warn anybody of anything that happens there. This is not. A, a I I was fine with it. Uh, you said you got electrocuted. Yeah, I got electrocuted. Uh, it's not a big deal. Peru, I am sorry. I do know about a little bit about what your experience is with storms. And I'm sorry. Peru just doesn't say anything, he just kind of shakes his head. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Jez, you're rel relatively new to the area still. I mean, you've been here for quite some time, but you travel quite a bit. But so, I guess new isn't the proper term for it. But, uh, all of you, uh, it's only noon, and since you have checked in with me and you did get the information I asked for, uh, well done. I can't punish you for being put into a magical slumber, so uh, forgive my initial accusations, but uh, you are free to continue go about yourselves this evening while I report back to the Queen about not only what you found, but also the fact that you are all alive and uh, she can fluff the army. 
the army. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the queen was really going to roll out the army for us. Army into the, the guardsmen, their responsibility is to find missing persons. And even though you are not technically real citizens of Grimoire, the queen knows about you. And so it is only wait, reasonable. Um, hold, wait, hold on. Were you about to... Were you about to send, like, a... Kill party after <laughs> That doesn't really matter now. <laughs> no one can know about us. Remember? <laughs> no one can know about our connection to <laughs> I think we can all let bygones be bygones. I said some things, oh you <laughs> yeah, we were gone for a week. You almost yes. had a kill party after us. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's fine. I think I, you know, I got. I'm calling <laughs> it off, so you'll be okay. Peru kind of like looks over at Jezebel, and he's like, "Are you really sure you want to work here?" Um, oh. sure. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of access to different things here. I, I. I I don't know what the big deal is. It can't be that bad. So like kill party doesn't like immediately turn you off. Listen, look at look at about it this way. We're va this means we're valuable to the queen. It means we're That's, worth something. That is now. true. Yeah. That is true. We are worth something now hey, to the queen. Hey. Oh. Uh, did somebody say my name? Yeah, me. Yes, Marin. <laughs> If you're speaking, I can't hear you. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm pausing. Oh, okay. Um, if you feel that bad about it, you should give me a job. Right, well, what kind of job can I, uh, interest you in? Mmm, you're no fun. Mmm. Marin, you know I've got quite the busy schedule and I have to pull <laughs> off the kill party, so... You know, I'll take- we'll take a rain later, check. Later. Yeah, we'll check a- I'll take a rain check, and I'll let you know. Great, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, <laughs> smiles. Uh, knowingly. And, uh, kind of leans back and, like, uh, starts to, like, kind of run his fingers through his hair so he's, like, taming it, knowing that he probably looked like a fucking disaster when you guys walked in. Uh, <laughs> and he turns and he's like, well, uh, Jez, you can you can go get settled in in your new dorm if you'd like. In your dorm. Uh, and the rest of you are welcome to check in with town. You know, the open market is happening today. But you're free to do whatever you'd like for the rest of the day, as long as you come back here tonight. Hey, by the way, is there more payment for completing our mission, or is there just that's it? Yes, uh, you will be compensated and find it in your room tonight. I, once again, have to contact the, t the Queen about your arrival and the information you've so lovingly provided to us. Alright. Yes. Uh, Thanks, let's go Dad. about. <laughs> and Peru gets up and leaves. <sighs> Wait, uh, did... Did Peru just ask- sorry, I cut out for a minute. Did Peru just ask getting paid? Yeah, uh, he did. He said that it'll be in okay. your bedrooms tonight after he t tells the queen. Mm. I think I wanted to go shopping to the bed, baby. No, it's fine. It's okay, uh, this is like the downtime period. We are entering into downtime period. So, yeah. um, when I say downtime period, I'm about, like, it's time for a shopping montage for the next, like, hour, because we're not going to do that. If you guys want to buy something that's, like, a generic type thing, like, if you want to buy, armor, like, a sword or something like that, like... Okay, you yeah. Can... I didn't I didn't know if there was, like, magical stuff at the market. Um, there are definitely merchants who are selling, um, like, I guess, like, knickknacks and stuff like that. They're not really, like... It's not like Elin's Emporium, where... It's like imported magical goods and stuff like that, but there are like traders and stuff like that in the okay. uh, in the square. 
because uh, every weekend they kind of every Sunday they come up and everyone sells what goods they have in an open market. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you guys are welcome to go check out the open market. It's not like a festival or anything. It literally is like a weekly occurrence. Uh, but if you want to search for something in particular, you can tell me and we'll do that. Uh, because if if it again if it's something like easily bought, then you just like. When we're not streaming, you can tell me and I'll tell you how much it costs and stuff like that. But it's over the course of the rest of today and tomorrow as well. Oh, okay. So, um... And never mind. Okay. Uh, so, what I can offer you guys is uh, a variety of, like, scenarios that you can choose. You're going to choose what you're doing with your downtime, essentially. So... Um, there are various options for downtime. You can, uh, work a job, basically. Um, it won't be a job provided to you by Ace himself. It won't be, like, a court job, but it will be, um, with one of the kind of allies to Ace outside. Because Ace, basically, in his day-to-day -day life, poses as a, um, basically, like, an official under the Queen. So, like, people who know Ace know that he works for the Queen, but they don't know the extent of what his job is. Because, like, you know, you can't have, like, a bunch of people knowing that there are, like, criminals being hired, uh, legally to break the law, essentially. <laughs> so, um, you would be able to work, like, Peter, if you wanted to, you could perform at, um, the local tavern that you guys went to, the Serpent Shield. Um, uh, or any of, like, any of you can do, a, a job there, like, waiting and stuff like that. This is basically if you want to make money on the side, uh, or if you want to eavesdrop on local conversation, like, a tavern is a very good place to do that. Um, there, you mm. could, um, seek out, uh, fellow criminals, because I think some of you come from a kind of seedy background. Uh, if not, that's okay too, but, like, you can definitely, um, seek out, like, maybe not so legal activities, now that you have this, like, immunity and you know you won't get caught. Um, you can definitely mingle with the criminal underground a little bit, a uh, form of, like, gambling. Um, Peru, I know you have, like, a specific character trait for Peru where he kind of has a almost a superhero persona, I want to yeah. say. Or yeah. like a mass vigilante. So if you wanted to do something like a solo mission or something, I could set that up for you. Um if you want Peru, to... I didn't know you were a superhero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh there there's literally um if you want if you are a worshipper of some kind of... Oh, rhythm is too loud. Okay. Uh, well, that means, Nat, you have to turn on your rhythm. I think, if Nat is still here. <laughs> okay, they are. Um... Uh, there's also... What did I say? Uh, you can... If you want, go back to uh, Elin's shop. I count that as, like, an activity because Elin has, like, very specific stuff that kind of rotates through her shop. You can go to the market. You, if you worship a god, you can go to temple and pray or contact your god. Um, and get, and that's basically, like, if you want to see if your god can somehow assist you or give you more information, then you'll, you are able to ask me a question and I will answer it for you truthfully. Um, but it has to be like, it can't be like, what's the deal with the circus or something like that. It has to be like specific and it has to be like, I'm going to say it has to be a yes or no question. Uh, and then I will have like the, the God explain to you as much as the God wants to explain to you. So yeah, like Gunby, if you want to do that, you are welcome to. Um, uh... Other than that, like, you can choose just to relax. And, uh, if you choose to relax, I will allow you to use the relax relaxation time to either build a bond with, like, someone else in the court, 
uh, because relaxation would imply that you like basically stayed home during this period. Um, you can you can talk to someone with the court in the court, or you can do research. And if you do research, that means you can um, essentially, if you are a magical person, you can study a certain spell and learn a new spell. Or um, if you are a more combat type person, you can um, you can either bump a proficiency up to um, mastering, or you can become proficient in a new weapon. So yeah, that was like a lot. But would do any of you have any idea how you want to spend this downtime? I'm going to remind Detroit real quick that one of the, the features that I will allow Peter to do as a person who's kind of like a conspiracy theorist type uh, person is that if he chooses to mingle with like townsfolk like go to the tavern and work there or something like that then he, he will overhear uh conversations and hear two truths uh no two lies and one truth <laughs> about something that's happening in town awesome well that's basically what i was gonna say i was gonna do was uh okay. work at work at the bar but at the same time uh try to pick up rumors maybe spread some rumors of my own about the carnival and whatnot all right. And then just accumulate information, hopefully of some kind. Okay, I'm gonna just make a note of that real quick. Um, as for Peru, I'd like to. Uh, can we? Is it only one activity that we can do? Uh, I am. I'm limiting it to one activity, because like every activity kind of results in you upgrading something or something like even with Peru's thing like out you will have a reward at the end of it okay. if he's just doing like an act of vigilante justice because okay. uh, yeah. like really what I was thinking was like I had a couple of ideas like either you know taking the mirror and getting that checked out uh making another down payment on my sword that I'm trying to get or uh basically like hanging around and bonding with people but Okay, um, well, I'm going to count because the, the, the glass, like, the mirror turned into glass is part of, like, the actual plot line, like, the storyline that is a separate activity, kind of, that is, like, plot-driven, like, okay. you, obviously, like, it's not a thing where it's, like, you have to do it, but, like, if you choose to do that, it's, it's separate from, basically, what you're doing on your own time. So, like, you can still do that and do something else, but you are only allowed to do, like, one thing at a time. I will also count, like, if you just wanted to make a down payment on that sword, you can do that as well. Uh, because that's, I'm, like, gonna classify that as shopping, but we're not gonna RP that or anything like that. You're just gonna tell me you put more money down on that, and we'll count it towards your price. Okay. Uh, so then, yeah, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna stay at home and bond with people. So that's okay. what I'm gonna do. Okay, stay at home bonding. Uh, Marin, do you know what you want Marin to do? Um, how much money do I have? Hold on. What like time period is this over? It's it's the rest of it's today like a, into tomorrow, basically. Okay, yeah, it's like a day. Um. <clears throat> Damn. Okay. Um. They come back around to me if okay. anybody else has something. Uh, Gunby, I know you still can't speak, but what would you like to do, my dude? Praying. Okay. Gunby is going to pray at his temple. Do you remember what the name of your god is, Gunby? Okay, you have it written down. That's good. Uh, so Gunby's gonna pray. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I'm gonna say, hmm, for Nyx. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted by something. Um, for Nyx, I'm gonna say he is going to he's gonna go you know, I think he's gonna gamble. <laughs> He's gonna go looking for some people to play with. Hey. <laughs> Get some details on the the seedy underbelly. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Marin, do you know? What he, uh, or actually, Jezebel, do you know what you want? Or I don't know if you're. Yeah, I can comment Back on that food. Okay. Uh, real quick. Yeah. Um, just probably wants to go down to the market and um, see what's going on there. Pick up a couple of healers kits and okay. more rocks because your favorite okay. cow has an obsession with rocks. <laughs> Do you want, so do you want to use uh, her downtime to go to get a and like meet with the traders and the merchants, the traveling merchants? Yes. Okay. Oops. Uh, Mar Marin, do you know what you want to do? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> if I go out working, I can't. Like, simultaneously spend that time to, like, uh, weasel my way into, like, practicing a, a skill. You want to practice a skill? By working. By working. Okay, okay. Can that happen? Uh... No, that's okay. Are, what are you, like, are you talking about Marin's specific job that he has yes. already? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're not trying. Okay, you're not trying to work like for someone in town. You're just trying to use his free no, time to work unless, his or, side job. Unless it's a performance. No, it's okay. Like, unless, um, I guess that would count anyway, wouldn't it? Well, the the reward for working for like a tavern is like payment, like money, basically. But yeah. like, Mar Marin is gonna get that payment anyway. But like, that's kind of part of who he is as a character. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for this instance, I mean, what, what skill are you trying to work on? Uh, I mean, expertise in skill? Entertainment skill? Expertise in a skill. Oh, expertise in a skill. Are you um, doing this? hmm. I'm just gonna say, like... Because I was, I was gonna say performance is probably the most feasibly applicable. Yeah, this isn't, like... Studying, like, the blade. No. <laughs> no, <it's>, well... <laughs> it's not quite the same. No. Um, I'm gonna say... Because you are getting like money from this i can't really okay, let you fine. also get skill points for this yeah that's fine then so yeah that's so if he wants to work his job in his free time then he can get the money from that okay can i okay. can i attempt to like maybe pick up some information about the city while doing that yeah that's that's fine okay okay so good. um i'm not going to like full-blown RP all of these downtime activities, because I think that would take 
way too long for everyone to have like a solo mission. So if you wish to have like a solo session with me, like you can message me throughout the week and we can just do it uh, off on our own time kind of thing. Um, but I'm just gonna tell you the results of, of your um, downtime essentially. So give me like two seconds because I have charts <laughs> that I had to make up for these situations. Okay. Uh, I am going to roll some dice real quick for uh, Nyx just to get his gambling shit out of the way. I missed my dice roll. Eleven. Okay. <laughs> um. So Nix. Nix manages to uh, scra scrape up 50 GP from his gambling antics. However, he was accused of being and tossed out of the match. <laughs> so he will not be able to revisit that certain gambling ring. Uh, but his reward from that downtime is 50 GP. Give me two seconds to jot that down. Okay, well, I need to like fill out my Nick sheet better. Okay. Um, Peru, you are bonding with someone. Who do you want to bond with? Hello. Uh... Boy, howdy. I mean, really, my heart says I want to bond with Gunby more, but I feel like that's, like, a cop-out. <laughs> you, can, you can bond with whoever you want, my dude. Yeah, I kind of want to bond with Gunby more, so I guess I'm, uh joining him at the temple okay uh so gunby you are taking peru with you to the temple so as a reward for doing that peru i'm gonna say that because you accompany gunby gunby gets an extra question to his deity nice uh so uh you can discuss it if you want like if if you have a certain question you want to ask you can uh ask ah. it you can basically be like, hey, Gumby, can you ask your god this for me? <laughs> uh, but if not, you can you can give your question to Gumby and just have Gumby ask two questions. Yeah, Gumby can just ask two questions because I don't know what god Gumby <laughs> worships, but I'm like, hey. Okay. Uh, Gumby worships Denier. So, uh, Denier, let me quickly... Uh, pull up there is the scribe of Ogma. So they are the uh, lesser known, like the the neutral good lesser deity of art, cartography, glyphs, images, knowledge, literature, and scholars. <laughs> so basically, uh, because Gunby is a scholar, like that is the god that they worship, and it's basically a god of like a lesser god of knowledge. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, which is a great god to get information from, you know? Yeah. All right, so Gunby, if you don't know what questions you want to ask right now, you don't have to ask them immediately. You can ask them to me later, and I will give you the answers and provide uh, that, like, in a public kind of format. Uh, well, I'll have it so that Peru and Gunby both know the answers to the questions. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to wait for you to type. Okay, good, yeah. Okay, so since you need to think about it, just get back to me and we will talk about those answers. Uh, Marin, how many people? Actually, I'm gonna have you roll something. <laughs> how many people? Roll a, <laughs> listen. Roll a d4. Oh, Jesus. All right. Four. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were able to um, hook up with four separate people uh, during this downtime. Fucking wizard. <laughs> and then, can you roll a d20, just like a straight up d20? No bonus or nothing. 
Nope. Uh, 12. Okay, I'm gonna check something real quick. A 12? Yep. Okay, so... Oh no. You've earned- no, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna say you've earned about, uh, 200 GP. Ah, okay. From your job. Uh... That just leaves Peter. Okay, Peter. Uh, so are you choosing to... I mean, it doesn't really matter because, like, the outcome is the same, but just for story-wise, are you performing at this tavern? Uh, or are you, like, working as, like, a server at this tavern? Um, I will say that I am actually performing. Okay! Um... <laughs> what song? Oh, what song? Yeah, what's Peter's go-to performance song? You know what? Hold on. I let me let me find something actually. You're working um, for Abel, by the way. That is the name of the the little gnome. Oh, well, the choice looking for that. Um, did I learn anything? Oh, um. Give me one second. I will tell you what you learned. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I will, I will DM you the uh, the song that Joshua. Okay. I mean, not Joshua. Peter will be playing. Okay. Let's see here. Where's my map? I keep fucking... I have too many tabs open, I apologize. There you go, okay. Alrighty. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Detroit, would you like... I'm, would you like me to play this in the in the music chat? <laughs> sure, it's I swear it's not anything. Me. No, no, no. It's I'm, I'm listening <laughs> to it a little bit. It's very nice. I'm gonna play the song that John. Uh, oh, now I said it. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Peter is performing. Oh God damn it. Um. I will be right back and I will tell you your two lies and the truth, but I have to let my frickin' roommate into the building, because she got locked out. <laughs> <sighs> I will be back in like two seconds. Go for it, go for it. I've returned. Okay. Um, so. Peter, I will DM you your two uh, lies and truth. Awesome. Uh, 
And then, uh, whenever any information that you guys leave on these like solo mission type things in between, um, like the main plot, um, you can choose whether or not you share that information with the rest of your party. Like, I'm not. It's never gonna be like, uh, you have to tell everybody. Like everybody on this kind of thing. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, Wiz. <laughs> no, I, I'm just laughing about it. <laughs> um. But yeah. Uh, you guys all, and I will DM you shortly because it's not it's not gonna be relevant right this second. Uh, Detroit, and I don't like. I don't want to be sitting here like typing. Uh, uh, no worries. No worries. While, no worries. While we are playing, but let me really quick uh, regain my initial background music, even though this is very good. I can see. It is very good. Uh, Peter shredding this on stage. <laughs> Um, just to let you all know, uh, I'm gonna kind of, like, cut the session a little short today, because, like, um, uh, the next part of the arc is gonna start after this. Um, today's session was mainly to, um, get you guys back and know that you have been, like, gone for a week, and also to introduce, uh, Jezebel as a character. Um, and also, um, at the end of the session, like, you are going to... I'm gonna give you your reward right now, which is the payment for this message, uh, uh, for this, not message, but, like, the information you brought back. Um, so you guys are each rewarded handsomely with, uh, 800 GP. Oh. Nice, hefty, hefty 800. Yes, 800 GP for information is pretty damn good. Um, if you guys ever have any requests, as like an alter alternate, well, alternate form of payment. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, like if you don't just want coin, you can ask for like a certain outfit or like armor of a certain like level or like a specialized weapon, something like that. Like they, they you don't just have to purely be paid in GP. Um, so just let me know. Yeah, 800 GP for everyone. Um, rolling in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's like Baron's the... pretty rolling in it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap up this session. All of you have had your time, all of you have done your individual tasks, and have reconvened at, um, at, uh, Ace's office. Well, not really his office. You are back in the throne room, and Oops. Sorry. Uh, you are back in the throne room of the Court of Spades, and you are, uh, gathered around that circular table where Ace has sat down with you guys previously to talk to you. And he looks a little, like, grim, a little more solemn than he is. Um, and he kind of, like, glances around at you before speaking, and he's like, Alright, so... I don't quite know how to put this, because it's gonna seem a little ridiculous of a request, and I understand if that's what you think. But after contacting uh, the Queen and discussing the results of your findings with her, uh, she has, well, this circus can't continue to exist on our territory. Uh, so, I'm sorry if this is inconvenient to any of you, but I'm going to have to ask that you go back and you shut it down. Also, we're the kill team now. Guys, we're moving up in the world. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
<laughs> okay, okay. So what do you mean by shut down? Do you mean like he does like a like a cutting motion next to his neck? You mean like that kind of shut down? Oh or God, like Peter. we just kick him Pref out? No, like we were... Prefer Peter, we are not assassins, Queen. Um, <laughs> we just, the Queen can't legally shut it down herself. It's not technically breaking any laws. But according to the information you brought back and the severe magical nature of this circus, uh, we are asking you as a party to confront the owner and demand that he shut it down. And if he refuses, that is when you are allowed. The right to kill, okay. Act. <laughs> <sighs> I don't think kill is on that list anywhere. I... no. I'm not... I'm sorry, but I'm not... I'm going to kill anyone that isn't... I'm, I'm not, not asking you to, to kill. kill. <laughs> I'm not asking you to kill. I would prefer it if you could just chase them off. Okay. okay uh, so I'll we politely you. convinced them. We're probably going to need quite a few tickets because they threw us out last time because our tickets expired. Um, well, I don't quite know how to help you with that. The tickets we received last time were sent to us, specifically. Gotcha. Uh, so... so we're gonna have to find a new way in. Uh, cool yes, beans. I'm afraid you'll have to go without any kind of admission. You're really asking a lot of us here. <laughs> which well, means you're gonna which means you're gonna have to cough up more than eight hundred GP this time we, around. We will compensate you greatly. There's one it's one thing to bring back information. It's another thing to act. Lovely. It's one thing to shut down an independent or <laughs> entertainment organization. <laughs> Well, okay, well, I guess, sure. All right. Well, the rest will. of you? I don't go for it. Go ahead, <laughs> Sorry, Peter, go, go ahead, talk. <laughs> no, I was going to say, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. We will, um, we'll take care of it first thing in the morning. We will, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do from the inside. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Uh, and as I said, you guys will be uh, rewarded greatly. So, good luck out there. If you need anything, please do use your communication device. Uh, I don't think it works there. I think that's why you weren't able to contact us, but we'll definitely try this time. Yes, uh, please do try. At least, like, if it doesn't work, Circus, you could tell me when you get to the circus, you know? Okay. Yes. And just like, you know, don't lose your head if we go missing for a week. Chill. All right. Well, uh, considering the nature of this mission, um, maybe you do lose your head like a little bit. Just a little bit, but not like a whole lot. <laughs> if we if we I mean, actually lose our heads, then maybe I think it'd be all right for you to lose yours as well. <laughs> <laughs> Especially I because keep it in mind. There's a whole uh, lot of magic users in that place. Yes, I do understand. Um, I do oh have god, one, I should I have had... done studying. I do have one question. Oh, what did you do instead, Marin? Oh, what didn't I do? <laughs> uh, Ace, like, kind of smirks at you, and he's like... I could have guessed as much. <laughs> uh, now then, you, I do you have- You shouldn't ask questions you already know the answer to. You're right. I was just- I was just curious. Um... I will- I do have one more question for you, however. Uh... Peru... What yes. exactly is that mirror that the ghost gave to you? 
She just said that she wanted me to turn it into glass. I have no idea. Marin looked at it and he didn't like it too much. It is um, illusion magic, and I'm not quite sure what it is past that. Um, uh, Peru, can you pass that to Ace? Sure. And I hand, I take it out and hand it to him. Can you do me a favor, friend to friend? Yes. Can you tell me what you see in that? What your oh. reflection looks like? Well, let's see. And he looks in it. And, uh... For a second, like, you kind of see, like... His, like, mouth, like, twitch and his eyebrows furrow a little bit. And, uh... He kind of, like, stares at it intently for a, a few, like... Like, a good 30 seconds or so. Before he kind of, like, seems to, like, snap out of it, and he, like, uh, looks up at you, Marin, and he kind of, like, gives you a cocky half-smile, and he's like, I see you one handsome gentleman. And then he hands it back to, uh, Peru. I don't think no, that really like... answered the question, but okay. Like, the same as you do right now, though? Hmm, a little different, but that's the nature of illusion magic, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um. Whatever, well, I just then, think you should keep an eye on it. I don't trust it. Well, she told you to brought it back, bring it back, didn't she? So, uh, you keep an eye on it, and, uh, there's any way for you to identify it, uh, let me know and I will look into it. I'll look into the archives and see if there's any records like this. Well, see, um, oh shit, that's what I should have fucking done. Oh. <sighs> do you know, hey, uh, do you know anyone with, uh, the lovely, super helpful spell Identify? Because I don't have it. Um, you That's might what be I able. Have done yesterday. <laughs> you might be able to take that to Elin in town. She knows the most about magic. I still have to visit her anyway, so I guess I will take it to her. That would be <coughs> wise, in my opinion. How long oh. do we have to do we have before we go? Well, there's not as much as a time on this one know the deal, so to leave the morning and visit her before- Em, you are breaking up super bad and I can't hear you. I don't know what happened. There we go. Can you hear me better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, there's not as much of a crunch time uh, this time around because we know, you know, what the deal is. So if you wanted, you could. Uh, visit Elin in the morning before you left but time is of the essence at this point so uh, do make it a quick visit you got it boss alright um, well then I I do hope you all rest up tonight uh, make sure you're feeling well uh, and I will meet with you back here to see you off in the morning is Jack coming with us again? Uh, no, Jack will be staying here uh, this time, so I do hope that is all right with all of you. Yep. Uh, right. We need. He is needed elsewhere at the moment. That's okay, we've got our own cool cleric, his name is Gunby. <laughs> yes, I am well aware. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very capable cleric. He is. All right, bedtime. Bedtime. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> uh, so you all return to your dorms. Um, if you ever, if any of you guys ever wish to like, this is like one more addendum. Like, if I am closing up the session like this, and you were going back to your room, and you want to do something in your room, like if you want to have like a little cutscene for yourself, like how Nix and Marin share a room, so sometimes they have like an interaction. Um, 
once they go back to the room or if you guys want to like stop and talk to someone before you go to your room then like that's always welcome if not night night bitches (laughs) (laughs) uh i think i'm good i'm also good for now all right um i'm gonna say uh before Nyx kind of like falls asleep he kind of like rolls over and like he's like hey Merit oh what do you want <laughs> sorry I just are can you really not tell me what you saw in the mirror no I can tell you uh Marin like rolls over so he's lying on his back uh but his eyes are still fucking closed Okay. Um, I looked like an elf, a dirtier, less attractive elf. That's weird. Right? Yeah, and I don't think I want to be a dirty, less attractive elf, of all things. So, not deepest desires. Okay. That seems like... Huh. I guess it might just be random. Maybe. Okay. Well, good night. Hey, one more thing. Yeah? I didn't tell it. Oh, you don't know about that. Is that, is um, that what that, that guy gave you? Yeah. Well, it's, what kind of address is it? Oh, it's just to a box in the circus, basically. A mailing box. Um. I wrote him a letter yesterday. Uh, he's pretty decent. They were all pretty decent. (laughs) But elves. Well, I hope it works out with him. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I don't know. You guys got along really well. And you're writing him letters? What? Uh, I... Marin, uh, pulls his leg up, and then slowly pushes Nyx towards the edge of the bed. Okay. What are you doing? Marin! He (laughs) he grabs you with his tail. No, don't grab me! If I go down, you're coming with me! (laughs) You're being an idiot. Oh, Even decent. Him. Not many elves are decent. So I said thank you for being decent. Okay. Well, then I'm glad you made a friend, Marin. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I mean that. It didn't sound very earnest, but I do mean it. No, I know. <laughs> but, uh... I. Yeah. You are still my best friend, though. You're my best friend, too. He rolls over and flops his whole body over you, and he goes, Oh, fuck you! I'm trying to (laughs) sing it! That's that's their interaction. Uh, I am gonna take it that Gunby probably doesn't have a little individual cutscene he wants to do. Uh, unless he wants to, like, stay up reading super late, like a nerd. Wow, what a nerd. <laughs> wow, what a huge nerd. What a big nerd. <laughs> Love a nerd. Super nerd. Uh, but yeah, that is gonna be the end of the session. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for coming and playing. I know it wasn't, like, super eventful compared to, like, uh, the last few. It was fun. Uh, rounds but i'm definitely gonna like 
get the information to all of you individually. And like I said, if you want to have like an actual small RP, um, whether it's voice chat or just chat chat, um, of the time that you spent solo missioning, you can totally come to me with that and we will do it. Um, but other than that, that is all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for playing. Thank yeah. you for DMing uh, us, Emily. Of course. <laughs> Always a good time. Yes. You're um, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, everyone who came to the stream. We will be back next weekend. Bye!